Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now today's video, The Digging Up of a Tudor Queen, is actually all about the exhumation of Anne Boleyn, the second wife of uh, Henry VIII, Queen Anne Boleyn, who had been executed on the orders of Henry VIII, now there's a surprise, on the, what I think are trumped up charges of adultery, uh, incest with her brother George, and conspiracy against the king. Um, and if, you re uh, if you'd seen my previous uh, video about the execution of Queen Anne Boleyn, you may remember that they'd forgotten to bring a coffin up onto the scaffold. So they cut her head off and, oh my goodness me, there's no coffin. So they quickly ran to the armory, got an empty arrow chest. She was placed in it, the lid put down, and she was buried uh, in the chancel of St. Peter ad Vincula, which is the parish church, basically, of the Tower of London. So anyway, the uh, reason for the exhumation of the corpse of Anne Boleyn was to do with the restoration of St. Peter's, uh, 1876 to 77. What had happened, it had fallen into such disrepair and a bad state. Uh, people had been putting more and more, uh, shall we say, dead people in. They'd even been digging up bones, pushing them to one side so they could get more in. And it had become uh, such a state that it was unsanitary. There literally was bodies everywhere in coffins and bones and so on and so forth. Now, there is a quote uh, about the condition of the, um, the chapel at the time, and I'm gonna read you that. So this is the quote, it's from Lord Macaulay in his History of England, and it's what he said about St. Peter ad vincula. I cannot refrain from expressing my disgust at the barbarous stupidity which has transformed this interesting little church into the likeness of a meeting house in a manufacturing town. In other words, it's become just a place where people will talk, gossip, meet. In truth, there is no sadder spot on earth than this little cemetery. Death there is associated not as in Westminster or St. Paul's with genius and virtue, but with whatever is darkest in human nature and in human destiny, with all the miseries of fallen greatness and of blighted fame. You see, buried in there are 34 people of note who were either died as prisoners in the tower or were executed. That's on top of all the other people that have been crammed into the chapel. So there were lots and lots of coffins, bones, and it was in a very bad sanitary state. So there's actually more to the quote, and I've just uh, dug a little bit more out. Thither uh, have been carried through successive ages by the rude hands of jailers. And he talks about how the people, the 34 notaries, were leaders of parties, were captains of armies, uh, the ornaments of court, and how they just been really quite badly treated. And also, you must understand, the most important people are buried uh, right up by the altar as you go in. But the church spreads out there, and they call that part the chapel, and there were partitions that have been put up, so I understand, in the 17th century. And these were stacked with coffins, there were bones, all these kind of things. And Queen Victoria, when she heard about this, was kind of horrified because unsanitary conditions for sure. But she stipulated, we're going to try and, you know, restore the chapel to its original condition. Uh, any bodies that are found in complete coffins, mark them, get them straight down into the crypt. If they're already in, in a vault down there, fine. But those that are buried and their coffins are rotting or there are just bones, place them in coffins, containers, mark them accordingly. If you can uh, identify them, then do, then get them all down into the crypt. So that's the, the whole business. And it was the um, captain of the tower was Sir Charles uh, York, who put forward the plan. And the original plan was very simple. They're just gonna get rid of all of the pews that are in there, replace them, make it more of a proper place of worship for the garrison and the people who live in the Tower of London, and just replace the uh, pavement in the chapel because it was all over the place. But unfortunately, 
when they emptied all of the pews out, they could see that they needed to dig up all of the paving. And this is difficult because it takes you right up to where Queen Anne Boleyn was buried in the chancel. So the great thing about this whole subject is it was all recorded uh, by a person called Doyne C. Bell, who was a secretary of Her Majesty's Privy Purse. Now, he'd found through history a plan of who was buried in the chancel, which is right in front of the altar there in St. Peter's. Immediately on your left, as you look, was Lord Rochefort, George, who was actually uh, Queen Anne Boleyn's brother. Queen Anne Boleyn is next. Then you have the Dukes of Somerset, Northumberland. Then you have poor Queen Catherine Howard. And then Lady Rochefort, who was Jane Boleyn, the wife of George, the sister-in-law of Anne Boleyn. This is so complicated. Then on the right-hand side, you have the Countess of Salisbury, Margaret de la Pole. I've already done a film about her terrible terrible execution. So when they lifted up the paving slabs, there wasn't um, the remains of George. They think he may have been further to the north or the body may have been disturbed. But exactly where it was said that uh, Queen Anne Boleyn will be buried, there they found a pile of bones. But they had been disturbed, but they were taken out and examined. So Queen Anne Boleyn's uh, bones were discovered two feet below the surface. Uh, they were exhumed and were examined by Dr. Mowat. He gave a detailed description of the bones saying they belonged to a woman 25 to 30 years of age, delicate, slender fingers and feet, a very small neck, which she actually referred to her little neck. But there's been some um, controversy about, was it Anne Boleyn? Now that's down for you to decide, but. This is my point of view, and that's all it is. She was found exactly where the old historical plan tells you she was found. Also, she does resemble Holbein's painting of her. You know, there was this thing, oh, she didn't have a square chin, and that's for other people to, to discuss. Now, what happened to the remains is, is brilliant because all of them are accounted for, and I've actually got it written down here from the original um, account of what happened to the bodies. And I'm going to read it for you. This is uh, November 1876. The, they were soldered up in thick leaden coffers and then fastened down with copper screws and in boxes made of oak an inch thick. Each were then placed in their original locations and then they were buried four inches beneath the surface, and then there was concrete poured over them. So there's no way we're ever gonna get access in it, which amuses me because people are saying they should be dug up and DNA tests should be done. Hey, can we not let the dead rest? Um, and then the earth was filled in and uh, all the positions, all the positions of the dead were recovered. Tiles were done when they relayed the floor. And if you go in, to St. Peter's to this very day, you can go up and you can just about see, but there are plenty of plans around the uh, church that tell you who's buried there. So the Tower of London, well, what a fantastic place to visit. I love it, I really do, but it's also such a sad place. And if you look just to the north of the tower itself, you have Tower Hill, over 400 people apparently were executed there. But when you come inside the tower, just in front of uh, St. Peter's, there is Tower Green, where notables were executed. There is a lovely memorial now. It's a, a glass cushion and around it is this poem. And I'm going to read that to you because it's a great way to finish this little video. And this is what it says. Gentle visitor, pause a while. Where you stand, Death cut away, death cut away the light of many days. Here jeweled names were broken from the vivid thread of life. May they rest in peace while we walk the generations around their strife and courage under these restless skies. Well, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, like, share and subscribe and 
remember to turn on notifications so you can find out what's coming next. Now, I've got some of my Patreon members that I'm going to mention. We have PG Gilliam, Peter Cost, and Craig S. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. It's helping me with future films, and I look forward to seeing you all in the future. But for now, bye.